God. I was being lazy the day before church. I took me a nap, about a two-hour nap. But I tell you what, whenever I woke up, the Spirit of the Lord was already on me. Have you ever woke up to the Spirit of the Lord? Hallelujah, it feels pretty good. I love to go to sleep feeling him and waking up feeling him. Hallelujah. And I woke up and I could hear the song, I Want to Finish Well. And it, it just sounded so pretty. And if, if those of you that don't know it, it of course of it is, I want to finish well. I want to win this race. Still leaning on his amazing grace. I want my last few miles to testify. God never fails. Don't want to fall down this close to the line. I want to finish well. And then I heard, right after that, I heard the Lord speak and say, if you feel your vessel is empty, call on God. Hallelujah. Don't you know if you want to end this race and hear him say, well done, my child, you got to have a vessel that's full of something because a vessel that is sitting around empty is no good to no one. I go through my house and throw away trash that has nothing in it. Hallelujah. Whenever I got empty containers in my refrigerator that no longer has food for me inside of them, they go into the trash can because I no longer need it anymore. Hallelujah. Don't you know you need something in your vessel because you're supposed to be feeding food to people. Hallelujah. Jesus said he is the bread of life. Hallelujah. We eat off of him. Hallelujah. So that we have life in us. But don't you know we abide in him and him in us. We're all from the same branch. So if he's giving us bread to eat, you got to have bread to give somebody else to feast the feast of Hallelujah. I need a son and an eye. Oh, I was reading the other day. I was reading about Jesus feeding the people with a few little loaves of bread and some fish. Hallelujah. And I started looking at it. And they come up to my spirit. Hallelujah. That's just like you. Whenever he broke it, he gave it thanks and he started giving it to everyone to eat. Hallelujah. How many times in this life have you been broken down by what's going on? Hallelujah. And you feel like you have nothing inside of you no more. Hallelujah. Don't you know trials ain't just for you? I mean, they help us. They strengthen us. Hallelujah. The trials are also for the other people. We got to feed them the bread. Hallelujah. We got to tell them what Jesus can do. Hallelujah. If you ain't never been broken, you can't help somebody else. Hallelujah. Because we live in a broken world. Hallelujah. Where the devil wants to tear down, kill, and destroy everybody he can get a hold of. But you got to tell them. Hallelujah. I thought my vessel was empty. I thought I couldn't go another mile when that trial was going on. But oh, then I called on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And whenever I called on that name, all oh, that oil started rising up in me. I started having something in my vessel that I could give to somebody else. Oh, Lord, I shut out that eye. You got to have it inside of you. Charles ain't meant to broke us down. They're made to make us stronger. I went through something at my home church a few years ago, and it was something horrible. I had people come against me that lied on me. Hallelujah. And you know, it's pretty bad when you got the whole church looking at you like you've done something wrong, and you're innocent of it. Hallelujah. And I wanted to get up out of that church. I didn't want to stay put. Hallelujah. Because I've done been hurt. I've been broken by my brothers and sisters in the church house. Hallelujah. I didn't want to stay there. I didn't feel like I could go another mile. I can't go in there and sit under that. I had hated my heart for that person. I had to pray my way through that. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I felt like my vessel had been broken and everything I had inside of me had leaked out. Hallelujah. Oh, but the whole time I was calling on the name of Jesus. I can't say much else, but I was saying, God, help me. Hallelujah. You won't let me leave this place. You told me to stay put and I can't go unless you stay to go because I'll be like Jonah. I'll be miserable and when the well spits me out, I'll be right back where I started that I didn't want to be. Hallelujah. Help me, Lord, through this. Hallelujah. And you know what I learned from that trial? Hallelujah. I learned how to be strong. I learned that even my brothers and sisters will come against me. Hallelujah. And it don't make them bad people. It just means that they got down a little bit and let the devil win. Hallelujah. And that was the way that they got to me. Oh, but I learned something more. Because since that has happened, since then, I can't tell you the number of phone calls I have got from people ready to quit church and walk out because somebody hurt their little feelings. Hallelujah. Someone looked at them the wrong way and they was ready to walk out of the church house. And I'm like, oh no, did God tell you to leave that church? You better stay seated. Hallelujah. I can't give them that bread. Hallelujah. If I had not first been broken. Hallelujah. 
hallelujah, so that I could go one. Sometimes it feels like we're being broken. We ain't going to have nothing else. We don't feel like we can give anything else. Hallelujah. When the woman touched Jesus, he said, virtue went out of me. When people pull and pull at you, it feels like virtue is going out of you. Oh, but you better call on the one. Call on the one who multiplies it all. Hallelujah. He'll multiply the bread that you give to other people to feed. Hallelujah. To keep them alive. Hallelujah. Every time that you get in that word and you start reading, he's feeding you bread. He's filling you up with oil so that you can go another step, so that you can give it to somebody else, so that they won't fall by the wayside. Hallelujah. Because we got a lot that's struggling alone. They don't know how to take the fiery darts of the enemy. Hallelujah. They ain't having that bread. They ain't learned to get in it for themselves at home. Hallelujah. And they're falling and they're dying. Hallelujah. But the Lord has Hallelujah. Those of you that know to do better must do better. You're responsible to feed those that ain't feeding themselves. Hallelujah. You're responsible to keep your vessel full of oil. Hallelujah. And you can't do that unless you call upon the one. Hallelujah. That supplies everything we have. Hallelujah. He'll give you the spirit in the time of need that comforts you and keeps you going through every single trial that you're going through. Hallelujah. He'll give you that spirit. Hallelujah. That'll dry them tears and when you're sitting there crying, all of a sudden you sit there and start laughing at the devil. Hallelujah. And you start to get full of that oil that's inside. Oh, that spirit of God will fill you up so you can go another mile and help somebody else. Hallelujah. Because if you want to finish well, you got to have something in you. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what. I'm told by that Bible that I've got things waiting on me in heaven. I've got jewels and crowns waiting on me. And whenever I get there, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be embarrassed and have the smallest one because I didn't have enough oil in me to go out and do something. Hallelujah. What an embarrassment it would be to walk around heaven having the smallest crown on your head, knowing you did nothing to help your brothers and sisters. You just barely made it in, hiding in rocks. Hallelujah. That's not what we're supposed to do. We're meant to go out and reach other people. Hallelujah. But when we go through things and we let ourselves dry up and we have nothing more in us, we have nothing to spread to the other people. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. oh but we got to get strength, guys. And the Holy Ghost, Charlie's been talking about that. We got to seek after the Holy Ghost. It is something that is necessary on this walk. Hallelujah. When you get saved, don't get me wrong. You get a form of the same spirit. There's only one spirit, it says. Hallelujah. You get a form of it, but oh, you ain't got the full baptism. You ain't got the full power that is in there. Hallelujah. You can't reach others the way you could if you had that full spirit. Hallelujah. You can't rise up out of the ashes like you could if you had the full spirit of it. Hallelujah. Whenever you're down, hallelujah, it takes a little more than a pep talk to get you up. Sometimes there's no one around but that spirit, hallelujah. And sometimes you ain't got the words. But if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, I'm telling you, those words rise up inside of you. You don't even know what you're speaking, hallelujah. But he knows what you need. And he's telling the Lord what you need, hallelujah, to rise up out of them ashes, to start getting that oil filled back up, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because we go through fire, and you know that fire dries out stuff. It evaporates things and makes liquids disappear. So your vessel will be dry if you have nothing to put it back in a hallelujah. You need to be speaking or seeking after the Holy Ghost so that you can get something inside of you. So that you can go out and feed your brothers and sisters. So you can go out and feed the lost. Hallelujah. Because we got to tell the lost something about what's going on as well. It's not just about brothers and sisters. It's about those out there dying, going to hell. It's about people that have backslid because they couldn't handle what was going in on their life. Hallelujah. There's been people that's been broken by the world that walked down on God. There's been people that broke their self doing things they shouldn't do that walked out on God. Hallelujah. If they would have had that spirit inside of them, they would have known how to get back up. They would have felt that oil rising up in them, giving them life again. Hallelujah. They'd have known how to call on the name of the one that can change something. Hallelujah. I ain't never been through anything in my life that my God could not fix. Hallelujah. I ain't never been so low that he couldn't swoop down and pick me up. Hallelujah. I thought that I was a time or two. I thought that I'd hit rock bottom and I was done for. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I thought, surely to God this time he'll be done with me. But oh, then that spirit comes. And I hear the talking and the moving inside of me. And my oil starts filling back up in me. Hallelujah. My vessel starts getting something. And I start getting strength. And I start going out and telling people, you can get through it. I know. Because one soul is dry. Hallelujah. And God filled me back up again. Hallelujah. I didn't think I could go another mile. But then, but then let me tell you, God showed up on the scene. And when God shows up, there is nothing impossible. Hallelujah. I don't care who you are, what you're doing, where you've been, how much oil you've lost, which way you lost it. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, one who can fill you back up so that you can be broken again to feed the others. You say, I don't want to be broken again. Oh, you better change that. You better want to be broken because we got to be broken down to be molded into what he is so that we can help others. Hallelujah. I don't want to just make it to heaven myself. What good am I going to do if I just make it myself? I want to be able to say, Lord, I brought them with me. Hallelujah. I've done what you said. I lifted you up. This right here is what I brought with me. Hallelujah. I didn't leave them in the fires of hell because you didn't leave me in the fires of hell. Hallelujah. You touched me, God, when no one else would touch me. When I thought I was left in abandoned, Lord, there you was. Hallelujah. Right on the scene, ready to pick me up out of the ashes. Hallelujah. Lord, you helped me to fly on wings of eagles. And I want to be able to tell him, Lord, I helped him learn how to fly on wings of eagles. How to get over this. How to feel like you've got something inside of you again. That I'm like you're dying, dried up and dead. Hallelujah. I don't want this walk to be painful for any of you. Yes, you're going to go through trials. But that don't mean you got to be broken down by the trials. Hallelujah. I've learned along the way that my trials should not ever affect how I feel and my circumstances and how I praise my God. Hallelujah. Instead, my God should affect my trials and my circumstances. Hallelujah. And how I praise Him. That's the only thing that matters. My trials don't matter. Yes, I get down. But if I can get to that place, hallelujah, when I get filled up with His Spirit again, oh, then I know, I know that I can go on another mile. Hallelujah. It's not by might, but by the Spirit of God that we do this. Hallelujah. And we all go into the desert. Hallelujah. There's not a person sitting here that has not been broken by something. And that's not just the adults. Even the little kids go through things that we don't even understand now that we didn't have to go through when we was a kid. They've been broken down. But oh, there's a man. There's a man that can fill you back up. Hallelujah. So that you don't feel like you're dead inside. So you ain't walking around kind of numb feeling. Has any of you ever been numb before? I've been there. I just go through my daily routines. I didn't really care about anything going on. Didn't want to care. I tried to block the world out. And I thought I'll just be numb. Hallelujah. And I've done that as a Christian, not a sinner. A Christian, I tried to numb myself to everything and make it through being a dry vessel. But I learned something. God got through to me and he said, you can't go around numb because if you're numb to the people, you're numb to me. Look at shut in an eye. For what we do unto our brothers and sisters, we do unto him. Hallelujah. And if I was blocking out the feelings of the world, if I was going around dried up, half dead, not caring anymore, just wanting to get through life and get home. Hallelujah. I wasn't doing my job as a Christian. I couldn't feel my brothers and sisters' pain. I couldn't pray for them like they needed to be prayed for. Hallelujah. You can't do it when you're numb and dried up. you got to have something. you got to be able to feel what people's going through to pray for them the right way. Sometimes we can get down and we can say a few little words for someone, but it's whenever we feel that compassion for them, when we understand what they're going through, hallelujah, that's when we can get through. When there's some oil flowing through, hallelujah, that oil comes out and it goes up in the sin of prayers before God, hallelujah, and it touches the Lord and he will move on their life or he is shutting in an eye. Oh, but God has no use for a dry vessel. Don't misunderstand. God does not need you. He loves you. He wants you. You was made for him. Hallelujah. But don't misunderstand. He don't have to use you. He does not need you. He wants to use you. Hallelujah. He wants you to be a full vessel. Hallelujah. 
So when you do things you're not doing him no favors. You got to stay filled up for your own self. Hallelujah. You got to stay filled up so whenever you give account for someone. Hallelujah. When you give account for yourself, you can answer God. This is why I done this. Hallelujah. Yeah, and it better be. The oil was in you at the time. Hallelujah. In the Bible, we read about ten versions. Five of them had oil. Five of them were foolish. Hallelujah. How many Christians do we have walking around foolishly? Hallelujah. They think they got another day, another tomorrow. Hallelujah. They're not being responsible with what they're given. Mm. But I'm telling you now, the Lord does not want an empty vessel. He doesn't want all that's halfway full. Hallelujah. I know life gets us down. I understand that. Hallelujah. But if you read this word, you understand this life is not supposed to keep you down. Hallelujah. You cannot walk around foolishly having only a half full vessel like the one version did. Hallelujah. They weren't ready when he came. Hallelujah. They couldn't give account for what they did because they didn't have enough oil burning for them. Hallelujah. To shine their life to somebody else. Hallelujah. They were half dead. Hallelujah. I'm going to be a pessimist right here. Some say half full. And some say half empty. I'm telling you, they were half empty. Hallelujah. Because they did not have what it took to get to the Lord. Hallelujah. They didn't have what it took to reach their brothers and sisters. You can't walk around dead and expect someone to get saved if you're walking around moping. Hallelujah. What on earth does the world want to come into the house of the Lord? And sat there and moped. Because that's what they see. When they look at us, they don't understand there's a spiritual relationship in between us and God that makes this worthwhile. They don't understand that stuff. You know what they see? They see their world going bye-bye. They see all the fun things that they think is fun, their pleasurable sins and stuff. That is what they see. They see that they have to give that up, and there's a bunch of rules laid before them. That shall not kill. That shall not steal. That is what the world sees. Hallelujah. And then when they see us walking around all sad, saying they're like, well, they wouldn't believe what they done to me. And I've just been so sick and I don't know what I'm going to do. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, your oil's half gone. You better get it full. Hallelujah. You better be speaking what God said. Hallelujah. You can say, oh, they come against me, but I pray for them so that they're going to make it too. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter because I know who I am with God. You say, I've been sick. Oh, but hallelujah. The Lord's word says, I am going to be healed. I was already healed. Hallelujah. I've been reading a book by Smith Wigglesworth, and he said something in there that just caught my attention that I loved. He said, you should never, ever pray for anything that you can say, thus said the Lord, because it says it in the Bible, because it's doubt, it's unbelief, it's disloyalty, it's disrespect to the Lord. If it already says it in there, then we should already know it. And that just stuck with me, hallelujah, because that is so true, hallelujah. But we don't do that, hallelujah. We walk around speaking what the devil tells us, hallelujah. You know people, some people, they get a little code. And the first thing, as soon as you hear it, oh, Lord, I'm dying. I'm getting pneumonia. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, huh. Yeah, you're probably going to with that kind of attitude. You're going to lay right there and die. Hallelujah. And I'm sitting there. I don't know what I'm going to do if the Lord don't come through. And I'm like, well, what does the Bible say? It says this, this, and this. But you don't understand what's going on. I'm like, yes, I do understand. The Lord understands. The hallelujah. He got spoke what's going on. Right. Some people you can't help. Hallelujah. That's Some right. people are just negative people and you can't tell them any different. They done got their self talked into a coma on their deathbed with the kids coming to visit and reading the last rock. Hallelujah. Yeah. But I'm telling you, a Christian should never be like that. Never. Hallelujah. Because that's not what the Word says. And they'll say, well, it says there's a sickness unto death. Yes, there is a sickness unto death. Hallelujah. But I think the Lord will let you know when it's your time to go. Hallelujah. You're going to know what takes you out of this world. Hallelujah. All this little petty stuff going on. All this cancer that's going on. Killing Christians and stuff. That ain't nothing but the devil. 
I don't think that any Christian should ever die of cancer. Ever. Hallelujah. We have power over that stuff. If their oil was where it was supposed to be, if we truly believed the Lord, like we said we believed Him, it would not come to pass. Hallelujah. Because that is the devil. There's not one sickness in this world that comes from the Lord. It is all of the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we're running dry. Do y'all understand? We ain't got what it takes no more. We're slipping on it. We're not doing as we should. We're not speaking the word of the Lord. We can't fight against these spirits ourselves. Hallelujah. You can't fight it off. You ain't got no oil in you to rise up and to speak the word of God. Hallelujah. You got to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. You got to be in his word. You got to be praying. You got to be fasting. Hallelujah. You got to put away the worldly things. And I know none of us likes to hear that, but I tell you, the Lord says, I am holy. Therefore, you be holy. Hallelujah. Sometimes we got to separate ourselves from the things of the world so that we can get a little bit of oil in our vessels so that we can do something. Hallelujah. And it is necessary to separate yourself from the world. If I go up to a sinner and they can't tell much difference in between me and them, there's trouble. There's a lot of trouble. I'm not going to listen to someone preach to me about the same thing that I see them doing. Hallelujah. It's not going to happen. Hallelujah. I'm not going to pay them no reverence. Hallelujah. you got to meet the requirements of the Lord. Not my requirements. Not man's requirements. you got to seek God and find out the whole past of the Lord. And you got to walk on the past. And you got to stay there. And you got to stay full of that oil. Because I'm telling you, Satan will drain you dry every chance he gets. He will throw the darts at you. He will throw rocks at you trying to break your vessel down. Hallelujah. But I've read that book. I know what it says. It says all things work for the good of those that love God. So why are we lacking on anything? Hallelujah. He says, ask and you shall receive. And how much more if there are things of him is he going to give us if we're saying Lord I feel a little bit dry I don't feel like I can go on anymore how much more is he going to fill you up with oil so that you can go on another mile so that you can do his work hallelujah there's no doubt in my mind that that is not the Lord's will for each and every single person hallelujah to be full of oil and to go on and do his work there should never be any doubt oh but we do we doubt and when we doubt, what we do is we give room to Satan to come in, hallelujah, and put cracks in. And that's when all their oil starts seeping out and we become dry. And therefore, we're no longer good for anything whatsoever. We can't help ourselves. We can't help our brothers and sisters. You can't feed somebody if you don't have it. Oh, but if you remain in the Lord, just like he did on that day when he broke the bread and divided it out, he'll break you and let it be divided out so that we can give to others. And yet there'll be more because I read that story. And at the end of it, the food was not gone. There was plenty left over. They took up baskets full of food as they're feeding thousands of people. At one point it was 4,000, another point 5,000. And that's not counting the women and children. That was only the men of that place. Hallelujah. And we're talking about five little loaves and two fish that fed all that. And you say you ain't got nothing in you. Hallelujah. If he can do that with the fish and bread, what's he going to do with you and your spirit? He's going to do the exact same thing. He's going to break you, multiply, but he will never destroy you. Hallelujah. There will be something left in you so that you can go on, so that you can be nourished. Hallelujah. But you got to turn to him because you ain't going to get it unless you're with the master hallelujah you will be dried you will become dead if you do not stay in him because if you're not in him that means that you're listening to everything satan says there's no in between hallelujah you serve one master or another some people get offended because they say i don't serve the devil i'm like well do you serve god no well, then you serve the devil. There is absolutely no in between God and the devil. You're serving one or the other. And even as a Christian, if you're not filling your things with the, or yourself with the things of God, then you're being filled with something else. Hallelujah. You're being filled with the things of the devil. And it might not necessarily be bad things that's going on. Just stress. 
Do you know that stress is of the devil? Hallelujah. Stress, fear, anxiety. Hallelujah. That's all the stuff of the devil. And if you're not putting yourself in the word of God so that you can be filled up, those things will drain you and they will kill you and you can't do nothing. I know I've been in the place so many times. I'm like, Lord, I know I'm being a little selfish in my prayer today. But unless we get me fixed, I can't help somebody else right now. Because I'm not to the place. I don't have enough oil to go around. I'm so broken. I'm not where I need to be, Lord. Help me to get to where I can help others once again. Hallelujah. And we got to do that. And I'm telling you, if you seek the Holy Ghost, it is so much easier. Hallelujah. And that is something that is a gift, not something earned. It is a gift that is to all who believe and ask of it. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. Amen. But that oil, that oil, hallelujah, whenever I heard the Lord speak those words today, whenever I woke up, I didn't think much upon it until I was sitting back there. And then everything started tying together with the fish and the bread, the things that had been on my mind. And I started looking around at the people, hallelujah. And I see people in here that are broken right now, hallelujah. But I see people that are in need of oil they're not just broken hallelujah the oil is seeping out because they're not where they need to be with the lord i'm not saying that people in here are lost i'm saying you need to get a little bit closer to the one who supplies the oil so that you don't die out and fall by the wayside hallelujah if you can get into the master's hand hallelujah he will supply you with everything you need hallelujah he'll fill up your vessel with oil once more so that you can go on another mile and when it's over for you I promise you, at some point in time down the road, you're going to witness to somebody. And you're going to say, I've been through that. Let me tell you how you get through it. And you're going to tell them about God. And you're going to give them that bread of life. Hallelujah. That is Jesus Christ. 